Hello, everyone. It's Suzanne Kohlberg. Welcome to episode 153 of the Nope Coach podcast, Vulnerability Hangover. If you haven't heard this term before, I'm going to define it in, in my own way. Other people might have different definitions. I probably should have gone to Urban Dictionary or whatever and seen the, you know, the Google's official definition. But to me, a vulnerability hangover, that's actually, I hate to try and say that three times fast. A vulnerability hangover is where you share something that's vulnerable or sensitive or something that makes you feel exposed. And then the hangover is like, you know, so after the call, the next day, uh, the morning after, or, you know, next time you're going to see the person, you feel this sense of doom or foreboding doom or or worry that you've overshared or you've, um you know, it can feel, it can feel really, really sensitive. So I see a lot of um, vulnerability hangovers in, in group programs. So when you go to a group coaching program and you open up about something that is, you know, sensitive or that you may not have shared with other people before or that you, you're you not sure what the response is going to be. And I think a lot of this comes from when we were children. Like when you're young and at school, if you open up about something and you're really excited to share and then you get laughed at or made fun of or you've interpreted something completely different to how everyone else has interpreted it and, um, you know, the shame and the shutdown that happens. So in my book... Um, I've written a book, The Beginning of Shit. It's my first book. Um, the most responded to section of that book really, really surprised me. I've actually got a copy of it here. I'll see if I can find it. This was unplanned. Um, it's in the first two chapters. So if you go to my website, suzannekohlberg.com, you click on book, you can download the first two chapters for free. That does not automatically subscribe you to my mailing list. It's a pet peeve of mine that if I get something and then I get 5 million emails. So you can get the first chapters for free. Try before you buy if you haven't already. And I remember there's this thing about a poster that I had done and everyone's reaction to it. Okay. Because my dad helped me with it. Oh, here we go. Here's the part. I'm just, this is unplanned, but I'm going to read you part of my book. Saturday afternoon, I spend a wonderful time creating the poster with Dad. He encourages me to map out everything in pencil first. Then we glue down the photos and erase the pencil to write in texter. I leave blank spaces to enter the weight and height. There's more context for this if you're reading the book itself. On Monday morning, I proudly enter the classroom carrying my poster. It is sensational. Quite a few of the other kids have done nothing and are hurriedly scribbling on their posters. A boy at my desk looks down at my poster and snidely remarks, your photos are stupid. Who do you think you are, a model? It feels like a punch in the gut. Moments ago, I'd been so proud of my poster and now I feel a sense of dread. I try to hunch forward and cover my poster as much as I can. Another boy pipes up with, and what is with all that glitter? What are you, four? I slump even further forward and try desperately to cover my poster. Can I ask the teacher for another? And then it goes on. But, you know, that to me is a vulnerability hangover, something that you either are looking forward to or excited or, you know, thinking this is the space to share and it is responded to in a way that isn't how you anticipated or even if it isn't responded to that way but you're not used to opening up. Like if you join a group coaching program or go to a space where you share in front of other people something that is, you know, sensitive or something that you may not have ever shared even if they are the most encouraging with their responses, once you leave the room, once you leave the space, you might be like, what was I thinking? I I, I overshared. I, I was too much. And I just really want to shed light on this because it's a common thing that is not spoken about. And just how much wherewithal or stones or gall it takes to open up in spaces. Like I run a group pro group program called Why Wait? And it never it never ceases to astound me, the bravery of the people in the space to to open up, to share, and the bravery that it takes. And, and even if you're not in my program, in others, to get on the phone, to have, a, or, or Zoom, to have a conversation with 
a virtual stranger and share things that you may or may not have shared with anyone before, that is exposing. That is frightening. There's another section in the book where I talk about basically hiring my first coach. And I'll see if I can find that um, quickly because, yeah, that that's another sensitive thing, another example of a vulnerability hangover. I'll just see if I can find it. Okay, so this is the other section in my book that I'm going to share. So this is where I had been Googling uh, how to lose weight without dieting and I came across a person who had a program. Um, so here's part of the book. I spend a few days debating whether or not to book in the call. What if I'm not the right person? She says she's very selective about who she works with. What if I'm the right kind of person and I really want it, but I can't afford it? Yeah. Side note, that's why I have price transparency <laughs> on my website now that I'd coach myself. I um, always have the prices listed, but you know, this is a, an aside. Back to the book. After, deb after debating back and forth in my head for a few days, I booked the call. The call is scheduled for 2 p.m., and as I'm hoping both my children will be napping and I can talk uninterrupted, I wake up early that morning feeling nervous and anxious. It's one of those days where time seems to pass so slowly. I keep looking at the clock and hardly any time has passed at all. My mouth is dry just thinking about the call. What if I say the wrong thing and she doesn't want to work with me? What if I'm beyond help? What if this doesn't work and I'm just going to be fat forever? I'm so worried I seriously consider cancelling the call. The debate rages in my head as I go between convincing myself I'm beyond help to deciding that this is going to be the thing. How many times have I thought that before? I'm tired of my own bullshit. By some miracle, both children are napping at 2pm when the phone rings. I hold it in my hand, watching it ring, debating, not answering it. We up and answer it before the ringing wakes the kids. Hi, hello, hi, this is Suzanne. Great, robot voice. You've gotten this off to a great start. And then I go into it there, but... That is another example of a personal vulnerability hangover. It's like I'm about to get on a call with a virtual stranger and lay down my life and like what if this person isn't the right fit? What if I can't afford it? What if I'm beyond help? All of these thoughts, I just, in this episode, what I want to normalise is that this happens to everybody. Our brains give us all sorts of stuff that isn't true. Like nobody is beyond help. But reaching out, connecting, asking, asking for help is a vulnerable action. And because the person may or may not be able to help you legitimately, but that does not mean in any way, shape or form that you are beyond help. So what I'm hoping that you take away from this episode is where in your life have you had a vulnerability hangover or are you avoiding something due to a fear of a vulnerability hangover? Like, is there something that you want to do, something you feel called to, something you feel drawn to, but you're worried it might not work for me because? And, you know, what if the opposite was true? What if the very reason that you're drawn to that is because it's time and you're ready now when in the past you haven't been? And what if when your mind takes you to the place of, I failed so many times before, why would this be any different? This time will be different because you're different. One of my coaches, Serena Hicks, she says, circumstances have changed and so have I. And I love that statement. It doesn't matter how many times you've fallen. It's like that other proverb, fall down seven times, get up eight. Or in my case, fall down 99 times and get up 100. But you, you, in every circumstances, you always do your best and your best gets to get better. And there may be times and places where you feel that you've been too much or you've overshared and you're feeling that vulnerability hangover and it's reminding yourself and trusting yourself that you know other people have got this they can handle it you can handle it and you know whatever it is you're feeling whatever it is you're feeling and you're temp going through is temporary I tried to say my brain goes faster than my mouth feelings are fleeting moments in time are temporary but the trajectory that you're on is is forever changing so no matter what's happened before where you are now is never as important as the trajectory that you're on. So if you can feel that fear and risk that vulnerability hangover and turn up for yourself anyway with whatever it is you're doing, if you're an entrepreneur putting out an offer that doesn't get the response that you hoped for, it's okay to feel vulnerable. 
if you're a creative person and you've prepared a written piece or a dance or created some music and you share it and the response isn't what you hoped or you feel that you've shared too much of yourself, that's okay. These moments, you know, will pass. And I just really wanted to share that today because I think sometimes we feel that we're the only ones and the only one who feels this or thinks this or goes through this. And at stages in life, we all have these moments. Thank you for listening. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.